Okay, so we're going to review how to write the names and formulas of ionic compounds. So first of all, if you start with the name and you want to write a formula, the two things you need to do are, first of all, you need to determine which ions are present. And that includes the charge, not just the symbol. The second thing you need to do is you need to determine how many of each ion you need to make a neutral compound. So, let's start with copper 2 hydroxide. So in copper 2 hydroxide, the 2 tells you the charge of copper. The Roman numeral in the name, it's only used with ionic compounds, and it tells you the charge of the positive ion. So, looking at that name, that tells me I have a Cu2 plus ion. Hydroxide is one of your polyatomic ions that you need to look at the list for. Hydroxide is OH minus. So I will need two OH minuses to counteract the one Cu2 plus. So then I will have two positives and two negatives. And the formula will be CuOH2. Now you'll notice that I put the OH in parentheses because in hydroxide, since it's a polyatomic ion, the OH together acts as a negative one charge. It's like a giant negative one atom. In the next one, we have nickel four sulfide. So nickel four, nickel is Ni, four means four plus. Now we get to sulfide. So in, besides hydroxide, pretty much everything that has an IDE ending is a monatomic ion, which means that is an ion straight from the periodic table. You'll notice most of the things, everything in fact, that ends in ATE or ITE is a polyatomic ion and it's from the chart. So sulfate, when we get to that one, will be a polyatomic ion. Since sulfide ends in IDE, that tells me it's just the element sulfur as a negative ion. Sulfur is in group 16, so it has a negative 2 charge. So when I go to balance this out, I have one nickel that is 4 plus. I have, one, I have sulfur that is 2 minus. So I'll need two negative 2s to get a total of negative 4 to balance out the one positive 4 in nickel. So the formula would be NIS2 which tells me two sulfides, each of them is negative two, po total of negative four, there's one positive four, so that's how you get that formula. Ammonium sulfate is pretty tricky. So ammonium is a, the only positive polyatomic ion you need to worry about. So if you look at the chart, the formula is NH4+. Plus. So this NH4, this whole thing, has a charge of plus one. Sulfate, ATE, another polyatomic ion. The whole formula is SO4 with a two minus charge. So the SO4, as a unit, has a charge of negative two. So if this charge is negative two, and this charge is positive one, I need two positive ones to balance the one negative two. So I'll need two NH4s to balance out the one SO4. Again, these polyatomic ions are a unit. So you don't take the subscript of the polyatomic ion off. You don't do anything with it. The formula stays the same. It just goes in parentheses. The last one is probably the easiest of this list of four, aluminum chloride. When you go to the periodic table, you, aluminum is in group 13, it is plus 3. Chloride is in group 17, it is minus 1. So now I'll need three things that are negative 1 apiece 
to balance out the one thing that is positive three. Three negatives, three positives would give me A L C L three. So that's basically what you need to do to write a formula from a name. What's the symbol of the positive ion, including the charge? What's the symbol of the negative ion, including the charge? And then balance out the ions. When we come over here to the other side, now we're going to look at, well, I have a formula. How do I figure out the name? So. You do have to figure out which ions are present again. Except this time, instead of determining the formula of the ion, you want the name of the ion. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to write the name of the positive ion and negative ion in that order. And then for some of them we'll have to figure out if there's a Roman numeral. So three, determine, determine if you need a Roman numeral. Okay, so the first one, SN, and then in parentheses, NO3, 2. So this in parentheses, NO3, 2, tells me that is a polyatomic ion. That is nitrate. So the negative ion's name is nitrate. Now what I know is that nitrate is negative 1. So nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So when I go to deal with the positive ion, the first thing I look at is the fact that SN is the symbol for tin. So this is tin nitrate. And then the last thing I need to ask is whether or not this needs a Roman numeral. Since it is a post-transition metal, it is a metal in the P block underneath the staircase, it does need a Roman numeral. So that's where I'll need to use this information. Since nitrate is negative one, and there are two of them, the total negative charge in this formula is negative two. There is one tin ion. It has to balance out the negative two, so it must be positive two. Okay. When I come down to the next one, PBI4. PB is lead. Iodine, I is iodine, or as a negative ion, iodide. So I have lead iodide. Then I have to ask, do I need a Roman numeral? The answer again is yes. So a Roman numeral must go in here because lead is also a post-transition metal. It's right near 10 on the periodic table. So to figure out the charge on the lead, what should the Roman numeral be? I look at the formula. The lead, I don't know what it is. The iodine, since it's in group 17, I know that's I minus. Since I is negative 1 and there are four of them, that means the total negative charge is negative 4. So that means the lead must be plus 4. So that one needs a Roman numeral. The next one, MgO. Mg, magnesium. O, oxide. O is oxygen. As a negative ion, it's oxide. I look, magnesium is in group two. It does not need a Roman numeral. I am done. The last one is sodium, or sodium phosphide is going to be the name. Na is sodium. P is phosphorus, which becomes phosphide. Sodium is in group one. 
It does not need a Roman numeral, so I am done with that name. So really all you're doing from going from a formula to a name is naming each part of the ion and then figuring out if you need a Roman numeral. The last thing I want to point out is if you see a compound with three different elements in it like this, that means that that is a polyatomic ion. You'll notice every name that's on this slide has only, every name of a compound has only two parts to it. The name of the positive ion, the name of the negative ion. So if you try to name three different things in the name of the compound, that's another indication that you have a polyatomic ion.